it is summer in your life. Death seems far away. Sometimes I go to the place where your ashes dance, mingle with the dust and the dirt. Where the wild rolling horses come, when I call your My mum is Julia Margaret Lee. When she gives birth to me, she is 27. It is summer in her life. Years later, a doctor tells her that she has bone cancer. Death seems closer now. That first day was very difficult because you know you've got to tell your family, you've got to get things sorted, um, and you're not quite sure how you're going to cope with it. So that was, that was a rough day. I haven't done funerals for friends, parents, etc. You do come out to your own home. But when you come out to your own home, in this situation, it's different. My mum marries Stanley, a funeral director. For 25 years, they work together to bury friends, family and strangers. How do they help people prepare for death? Uh, there are several different types of prepaid funeral plans with different companies, uh, but the where it's beneficial is that uh, where there is a movement of population today compared to the old days um, when families stayed in the area today they like to do the prepaid funeral plan which covers all aspects of the funeral from the coffin hearse cars uh, even bearers so often we hear from um, both from Stan, from the work, work aspect, and from our own friends who uh, are involved with bereavements, that they haven't asked the parents, mother, father, whatever it may be, what their wishes were. There is definitely um, a case where death is not discussed in that way. I ask them, can you discuss your own death? No. No. Different. <laughs> totally different. It's different, completely. My friend has found a different way to help her mum prepare for death. My mum uh, had been a hairdresser, but that wasn't really my mum at all. Uh, she's Jacqueline Ann Connolly, and um, was a very, very special lady. Uh, the only other sort of uh, death experiences I'd come across were my friend's parents being taken away from them very quickly, so not being able to have the chance that we'd been given. For my mum to be able to make the preparations for herself, rather than us kind of thinking, oh, well, what did she want? She could turn around and say, well, actually, you know, I'm claustrophobic, so I'm having a wee willow uh, coffin rather than the usual or whatever. And uh, I want yellow silk on the inside, which, you know, is just the most fantastic um, thing to be able to do for yourself and for us to be able to support her to, to do what she wants to do, to, to have the final ending. She can actually plan it as much as you can plan these things. As our life drips away and we struggle to survive, I wonder what form of belief could possibly help us plan for death? I don't really, I don't, I don't really have any strong beliefs. Yes, I, go, I do go to church, um, and I suppose some days I think, 
well, I could be a Buddhist and I could believe in Buddha. Other days I think, oh yes, I think there might be something and you think on the, on the God aspect of it. But I can't say honestly that uh, I have very, very strong belief. I can't get any solace from uh, thinking that uh, there's a soul and it's gone. And all that's left is the frame. No. Don't know why. As far as I, I'm concerned, I don't have a particular religion, but I, I live morally and take what I feel I can from whatever I come across. And I think that is what she was doing. So being able to use meditation and beliefs that she may be reincarnated or that a, a spirit will go to heaven, all these beliefs help to be to keep strong, I think. And it's not like she strictly believed in them. She felt it. And I think that's the real big difference. She wasn't reading it from a book every day. Um, she was feeling it for herself every day, which I wish more people could do. It is autumn in your life. Death moves closer now. Will it really happen to you? It seems to me, though, if, if we've got to a stage where we've accepted our own death, you know, if we really come no. to a state of acceptance. Well, I don't, I don't know. I can't say I'm accepting it. I said you like Del and Thomas, do not go gently into the sweet night. That's me. I'm going out kicking and fighting and screaming not going quietly. The main things that she communicated to us in the end was that her life had turned into sort of one long meditation. You've got so much time to spend with yourself and in your own mind, um, nothing to busy yourself about with that uh, you've really got nothing else to do but to try and come to terms with what you're facing. It is winter in your life. Perhaps death is just another journey if we learn to let go and enjoy the ride. There is a story of a wave who is fearful as she watches her friends crash onto the shore. I don't want to die, says the wave. Don't be afraid, says the sea. There is no death. Each wave simply returns to the ocean. In my 